David Condliffe is here, and David Condliffe is from the union called Unite. So I'm expecting, you know, we have to calm down and be serious for you now, David, don't we? Thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, do, please do. Now, now tell, us, tell us about this report then. So MPs have um, been less than nice, haven't they, about Sports Direct, saying that they not only do they treat their workers badly, they don't even treat them like humans and have described it more like akin to being in a Victorian workhouse. Well, they've been damning and they've been scathing in this report, haven't they? But it confirms our concerns of widespread exploitation of workers. And we've been campaigning for 12 months since to expose what's been going on inside Sports Direct. And at the heart of the issue is the employee's inability to raise concerns for fear of losing their job, which leads to this level of worker exploitation. And it's well documented the young woman who gave birth on site, the health and safety abuses, over 100 ambulance call-outs. As you said in the report, it said workers were treated as commodities, not human beings, and working conditions below acceptable standards in the modern economy. So I think it's a scathing report, but... That's, I mean, that's obviously against Sports Direct, but we mustn't forget is the role played by the agencies who Sports Direct pay £50 million to supply labour to. I mean, they were accused of giving false evidence and misleading the committee and setting up these dubious insurance schemes, charging workers £10 to set up a bank account, and then again charging workers to take their own wages out. So there's lots of things in the report that we welcome, for example, the extending the scope of the Gangmasters Licence Authority to look into these kind of practices. Dave, yeah, just, so just, no, just let me let me pause you on that bit. Tell us a bit about these agencies then. So this isn't your kind of, doesn't sound to me like the kind of high street agency I went to years ago, which is like, you know, your office angels of the world. So who, who are these outfits then that well, I guess people are going to looking for work and then tell us tell us a bit more about that. Well, but obviously it's Best Connections and Transline are the two agencies involved, which are big agencies. And like, I just said, like, uh, Sports Direct pays £50 million to supply that labour. And um, what they do is obviously they, they are tasked by Sports Direct to find workers because what kind of this nature of employment, they have a high turnover because you can imagine workers, um, if they have their six strikes, then they, they remove, they raise a concern, they remove. So it's a high turnover of Eastern European workers and British workers and they don't operate a disciplinary system, they operate this six strike system and you can get a strike against your name for having any sick time off even when you've got a doctor's note. That's why we have people going into work who are help. And we had a fella who um, had a, we thought he was sleeping in the canteen, he had a stroke. And this kind, of, you know, this kind of turning up to work when you're sick, because even with a doctor's note, you get a strike against your name and you, can you lose your job. So, so what, what, what can people do? Because, I mean, I guess if you work for Tesco and you, you, you know, Unite or Tesco's union and all the rest of it, or a Asda of the world or whatever, what can you know what can people do is is it worth joining unison or joining unite or or the gmb whatever it is what should workers do so you've got all these people that are working in this this particular shop and yeah. because they're not coming together collectively i guess you could argue they're not having their voices heard and they're being exploited so so you know this is what, what should people do if they listen to this program and they're working in one of these shops in town thinking that sounds just like you know what we've got to put up with what should they do well, they should join a trade union. I mean, any of the unions that you name, whatever trade unions cover in their sector, like the Unite, GMB, Unison, RMT, whichever unions cover your sector, first and foremost, join a trade union. Because if we hadn't campaigned um, against what was going on at Sports Direct, these before... We still wouldn't know, would we? We wouldn't know. I mean, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know about the man with the stroke and the lady with the baby in the toilet. We wouldn't know. And not paying the national minimum wage for four years. And charging people for setting up a bank account. I read somewhere that as part of the definition of slavery is when you, your employer um, provides the tools that you have to have to do your job and then makes mm. you pay for them out of the wages. And that's, in effect, what's happening there with the bank accounts, isn't it? It is, most definitely. I mean, where you've got these legal minimum standards, like the legislation covering the national minimum wage, it's difficult to enforce as an individual if you're not part of a trade union and sports mm. direct is a case in point. But mm. well, let's talk about something positive. I'm um, glad you said that because you've got us so cross now, David. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Come on, lighten the mood, David. To get you angry, then by the end of the interview, to get you more angry, to get you levied. So a real positive development is this. Obviously, um, we're in talks with Mike Ashley in Sports Direct, uh, which is really positive. So we're starting to have a dialogue. So we're addressing the issue of non-payment of the national minimum wage, working with the HMRC. And so this, this kind of precarious employment is at the heart of work exploitation. So we're working with my task in Sports Direct to say, look, you employ 3,000 people on agency. Why not move them on to permanent fixed-hour contracts? 
the last two years, the average amount of hours these works workers have done is between 32 and 39 hours. So the work's there, so let's move them on to permanent contracts. And so it's really positive dialogue. That is positive. Yeah, well done. That, that is positive. that is more cheerful. Congratulations. Well done. It is. Yes, it, it is. is. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. And then obviously the wider issue is we want government to really work with us to outlaw this exploitative use of zero-hour contracts because what was pointed out in the report was it's not just Sports Direct. This is commonplace across a lot of workplaces. This kind of precarious work that puts workers in a position where they're not, in the bill, they're not able to challenge. David, I'm glad you're working for Unite. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really you, you am. You can take that quote into your next uh, appraisal. <laughs> no, I really am because... It, it, it's a big, horrible, horrible mess, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, it's, it sounds like you're making good progress with it. So um, anyone listening then who's in our region in Bradford might work for one of these companies, if they want to join a union, and, I'm, I'm, you know, let's spell it out for people, what's the easiest way they can do that? Just go on the TUC website, and there's lots of, all the unions are on there, and you'll find a union that covers your sector. Excellent. That's as simple as it is. Thank you very Perfect. much. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, David. Now, I happen to know that David's parked in Sainsbury's car park right now. Are you going shopping? Are you finished work now? No, I'm just finished work. That's my last interview of the day. And so now I'm going to... Beer time. Well, I'm going to well up and uh, find a cider, I think. Yeah, cider. Oh, well, that sounds good. Cider o'clock. Well you need done. to know it's about 120 degrees in this studio. <laughs> so the idea of having a cold pint of cider is very it's appealing. very, very appealing. Very appealing. Well, with, with plenty of ice. Yes, oh, good advice, idea, yes. good idea. Well, have a lovely weekend, and yes. thank you for coming and tell us about that, and feel free to come back again and tell Anytime us how you're getting you like. on. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Take All right, care. thank bye you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.